Drive It Up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 2,158. Be prepared to be inspired. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. Today I'm in Los Angeles, California, where it's always sunny, now with a very special guest by the name of Francisque Sevignon. Francisque, welcome to Cars Yeah. Do you have any gear, and are you ready to release the clutch? I am, Mark. Thank you so much for having me. We're going to have some fun today, no doubt. Now, before I give you a proper introduction and we jump into this very cool business uh, that you've built, what's one little thing that maybe people don't know about you? Well, they probably the things that most people don't know about me is I come from a family of 12 kids. Whoa, <laughs> so 12 I, kids? Oh my gosh. Yes, yes, I know it's unusual. So I have 11 brothers and sisters and uh, that's a pretty big family. Oh, that's huge. Now, where do you fall in the mix? I'm right out in the middle. Oh, the I'm middle right child? Well, yeah, see, yeah, yeah, that yeah. explains a lot, the middle child. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's, that's always the one that uh, is uh, industrious and maybe gets into a little trouble and has some fun. And uh, that's definitely something you've done with your life, I think. Well, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's been, I, I was very lucky because, uh, you know, we all get along very well and we had wonderful parents. And so, you know, it's funny sometimes in, in today's world, raising kids has become so expensive. So when I say that people think I'm some kind of uh, French royalties, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's not the case. I'm not the cousin of the king of whatever, you know, but I, I just come from, you know, pretty uh, uh, middle class, pretty standard middle class family in France. We just uh, happened to have a lot of kids and uh, my parents had 10 and thought, yeah, let's adopt another two. And uh, oh all together it's 12. <laughs> so well, you know, it. families that are big like that, they find a way. Yeah. And I think the dynamics as more and more kids are in a home changes, the kids help with the other kids. It just works and you, yeah. ma you make it work. So, but yeah, these days I'm trying to imagine the, uh, the looming college cost of sending 12 kids to school. Well, it, it was, a, it was a different world, Mark. I mean, you know, in those days we didn't go on vacation in the airplanes, you know, we didn't yeah. travel. I mean, it's just like we yeah. would go camping yeah. or we would go see the cousins, you know, uh, it was different. And, and college College education in Europe is a lot more affordable than oh, in America. Than here, yeah. Um, and so, yes, yeah, so we were, that was part of my, probably my dad most, uh, uh, things he was the most proud of is that he sent all these kids to college and uh and so uh but they did they, they, they just did everything for us not for them so so that's uh that was uh yeah that was fun that's that amazing fun. wow i'm just trying to imagine that wow i had one sister and i'm trying to imagine I, my wife came from a family of four so there was a little bigger brood there uh working <laughs> out and the oldest sister uh kind of took care of the youngest ones as it went so no doubt very much there's a tv show that i've seen some sh shows up over here in the U.S. called the Duggar family, and it's a huge family. I think they have nine or 11 kids or something. <laughs> and you just watch how they all work together and how they, it's just a wonderful group of people and how they all take care of each other and build some very strong bonds between the kids. And oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, well, that's fantastic. We're going to talk about what you're up to. So let me give you a proper introduction. Francisque Sevillon, doing my best French here not to butcher your name, is, <laughs> is the founder and CEO of ePartrade, the global platform for the performance of racing industry. He is a former race car driver who was raised in France, as he said, with a lot of siblings, and has spent the past 25 years traveling the world, promoting the industry at major racing events. He's formed a vast network of motorsports and automotive professionals from around the globe, from team owners, promoters, manufacturers, racetrack owners, engine builders, fabricators, and a whole lot more. His career includes time with the Promo Course International, the ICN, Formula One, the WRC, Castrol, and a multitude of rallies and racing events. What a life. We're going to learn a lot more about EPAR Trade. And for you regular listeners, as I mentioned, Judy Keene, she was a guest on the show a few weeks ago, so you can go back and listen to her perspective on EPAR Trade. We'll be back in just a minute. For first, a word from our sponsors, They're the ones that keep gas in our tanks here. So give them a little love, and we'll be right back. 
Covercraft's newest five-layer indoor cover is especially engineered for indoor use, providing maximum dust protection when your vehicle's stored in the garage. Your five-layer indoor cover is custom-tailored with Covercraft's attention to detail, form, and fit with the quality and attention to detail that's been their standard since 1965. Even if your vehicle is always inside, dust and fallout can damage the paint, and an extra layer of soft, breathable material protects from accidental bumps and rubs. Covercraft protects cars, trucks, motorcycles, RVs, trailers, and watercraft too. Every one of my vehicles is protected with a Covercraft cover, custom fit to fit the car like a glove. And I have a deal for you. If you use the code ya 21 at Covercraft.com, you'll get 10% off your order plus free shipping. That's right. 10% off and free shipping. Simply use the code YEAH, Y-E-A-H-2-1 at checkout. Covercraft, protecting the things that move you. I was tired of my rates for my collector car insurance going up every year for no explainable reason. My carrier seemed to be turning into a media company versus an insurance company. And I realized that a portion of my policy premium was paying for all those so-called free media goodies. So I did my homework. I talked to knowledgeable collectors, shopped around and discovered American Collectors Insurance. They've been serving the collector car hobby since 1976. You last that long by properly serving your customers insurance need, not with a lot of fluff. ACI is ranked the number one online collector car insurance provider, according to Google, Trustpilot, Facebook, and they offer their real person guarantee live support. No never ending phone loops when you need help. Plus, because you don't use your classic car as a daily driver, you could save up to 40% compared to regular auto insurance. American Collectors Insurance provides agreed value policies. So if you experience a total loss to your collector vehicle or it's stolen, you'll be paid the amount listed on your declaration page, less any deductibles, of course. No ifs, ands, or buts. Give them a call today and ask for your free quote at 866-A-C-I-Y-E-A-H. That's 866-224-9324. Tell them you're a friend of mine, Mark Greens, at Cars Yeah. American Collectors Insurance, classic car insurance designed by collectors for collectors. Jim Canova is a past guest here on Cars Yeah, and he's detailed over 8,000 vehicles. And that kind of professional experience leads to innovation. He was tired of uncomfortable stools and creepers and being down on his knees when detailing cars. So as a result, Jim thought, you know what, there must be a better way. And he invented the Bumby Seat. His unique design gets you off your knees and your bum onto a far more comfortable seating position for all your low-level automotive detailing. The Bumby seat, with its patented full-flat design, allows you to adjust your position to the task at hand. Convenient side trays hold your car care products, tools, cloths, or a tasty beverage. Built for the toughest driveways and garage tasks, the Bumby seat has wheels that roll easily over almost any surface, and it makes a great around-the-home adjustable stool for hobbies, yard work, or take it to the car show. The full flat design makes storage a breeze. Jim has launched an Indiegogo fundraiser and you can get in on the start of what's sure to be an industry favorite. Go to Indiegogo.com and type in Bumby Seat, that's B-U-M-B-E-E Seat, to be one of the first in line to start improving your automotive detailing experience today. That's Bumby Seat on the Indiegogo.com website. A fun folding mobile seat design. Francisc, we are back. So I want to dive a little deeper into EPAR trade. But before we go there, I want to learn more about your back end story of how you got into this because you race cars, you've been around the racing industry, the performance racing industry, and you've been so deep into all of this and creating what you've created. And EPAR trade is a it's a rather, I think it's what, about four years old now? Is that right? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So a rather new element of what you've been doing. So kind of take us on a little bit of a ride around the track into your past and how you got here. Well, I'm I'm a failed race car driver. That's the reality of it. Okay. So as I said, I grew up in France and my dream was to be a Formula One driver. Fortunately, I didn't make it. And my parents uh, pushed me to, uh, you know, university and college. 
I mean, my passion has always been racing. So when I graduated, all I wanted to do was to work in the industry. So where I grew up, there was a big racetrack called Manicourt. And oh, at that yeah. time, they were hosting the French Formula One Grand Prix. So that was my first job. And then I went to Castron and then Promo Course International and all these things. And then little bit by luck, um, I was at the Long Beach Grand Prix uh, in the uh, summer, April of 99. And uh, a good friend of mine, Yves Morisot, from Sten 21, the French uh, uh, safety manufacturer. Yes. He's been a guest on this show. Yeah, he's great. Eve is like, like a godfather for me, you know, oh, the industry. Wonderful. And uh, I was working for a show in Paris, a motorsport show that was, you know, general public. And uh, we had 150,000 fans coming in, in and out of the door. And Sten 21 was an exhibitor of that show. And he kept saying that we want the trade. We want the business to business. I'm not interested in fans. And uh, my boss at that time was making so much money selling tickets, he couldn't care. <laughs> and uh, But I was always you know, intrigued by, by, by Eve's uh, uh, perspective. And so I was at the Long Beach Grand Prix and I bumped into him. I had no idea he was there. And Eve was there says, oh, tonight... I, I have a dinner at my house. Steve Lewis, the founder of PRI, the show I was telling you about, is going to be there. I want you to come. I want you to meet Steve. And so I drove to Newport after, uh, after the race, and I met Steve Lewis. I never heard about PRI, no idea what it was. And uh, Steve started to tell me you know, everything he does, and I was absolutely astonished. And, and I told him, I said, Steve... This is wonderful, but the reality is I, I don't think that many people outside of North America know about PRI and what you do, and uh, and I could help you with that. And he said, uh, no, thank you. I think we're good. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so I went back home, and I kept pounding, and I just kept preaching to Steve. I said, Steve, I have this idea, and I could do this, and I could do that. And after a while, he says, well, why don't you come and, and let's have a talk? So I didn't tell him that. I quit my job in France. I came here. Oh, my God. And I was, wow. I was when I was, Mark, it was prior 9-11, okay? So at that time, you could come here, you know, on, on a tourist visa, meet people. And then it took about two or three months for Steve to figure it out. And then he said, okay, that's good to go. I want to hire you. And at that time, you could get a working visa in, in a couple of weeks. I was Pretty just, easy. Yeah. Very easy. Boy, thank Things have changed. Uh, and, and so, so yeah, it has. And so I pushed as hard as I could and I managed to convince uh, uh, Steve to hire me. And uh, and he said, well, here's a computer, here's a phone, and just go and try to conquer the world. <laughs> and and it was kind of the right time, the right place, and we had an incredible journey. And uh, I was, uh, it was at the time when the market was becoming more and more global that uh Things were changing uh, a lot, uh, especially if you remember in the early 2000s, Ferrari started uh, uh, to be the dominant forces in, in oh, yeah. Formula One. And what happened during that time is they were starting to make a lot of things in-house. So a lot of the European suppliers that used to sell to Formula One team suddenly were getting less orders and had to find new market, new opportunities. So hey, suddenly, hey, let's look at NASCAR, let's look at IndyCar and all this. And then the American manufacturers were trying to extend their business around the world. And PRI was the magic place. So I basically built the international attendance for PRI for about 18 years and worked very closely with Steve and then the late John Kilroy. And then uh, when SEMA uh, purchased PRI in 2012, I stayed for another uh, uh, six years or so until uh, uh, 2018 when I decided to to leave uh, to study portrait. And that's kind of my journey in uh, in in the industry. And and e portrait is not something I woke up one morning and thought, oh, let's go online and do something. If you remember. In the um, early 2010, 11, 12, you know, the digital world started to become a lot more important in our life with mm -hmm. Google and all this. And and if you go back to what I was saying, when I came here in, in April 99, we it was a very different world. You know, we use maps when we travel. We yeah. had phone books. We had uh, public phones, okay? Today, we live in the world of Uber, Netflix, Waze, Amazon, you name it. It's, it's not a question if it's better or worse. But what I started to wonder is being a trade show business, collecting people once a year at the end of the year during trade show season, I thought, this is great. But what about the time where we're not at PRI or not at CIMA or not at Autosport? I mean, you know, altogether, there's about 50 weeks left out of the year. So I thought, 
what if we digitalize the industry, put it all in one place, build a platform that basically would allow the suppliers and the buyers to connect the 50 weeks out of the year when we're not at shows. And in order to do that, you basically go online. And so we created EPAR Trade really from our trade show experience, okay? And what I mean by that is when you're in a trade show business, you go to a supplier like Edelbrock or Stand 21 or IBAC or, you know, Hardy, and you sell them an exhibit space. Then you go to the dealers, the race team, the fabricators, the tuners and the WDs, etc. And you invite them to your show to source product and suppliers, okay? But on the platform, we do the exact same thing. We basically sell a subscription to the suppliers for them to showcase their product. And then the buyers, instead of registering to go to the show and fly to a show, they basically have a login and a password. They can go on the platform anytime they want from anywhere they want in the world. So -hmm. that's really what we did. We basically brought the industry into the 21st century. And around it, we created a business community that is connected and engaged with content. So the platform is really the backbone of everything. And around the platform, we have a newsletter series that goes out pretty much every day. And it basically reaches out about 75,000 business professionals around the world and puts out every day new products, new services, new technology, etc., And then every week, we have a webinar series. It's called Race Industry Now. And that's when we invite a supplier in front of a live audience of uh, uh, industry professionals to talk about their technology, their innovation. We have two wonderful hosts that uh, Jeff Hammond and Brad Giddy, they host those webinars every week. And we have produced 230 plus of those. And I mean, you have webinars on suspension, data acquisition, safety equipment, you name it. And then once a year, in partnership with our good friends uh, from racer.com, we produce Race Industry Week. And that's five days, 55 hours of live technical and business webinars. And that's when we bring all the big names, the Roger Pensky, the Zach Brown of the world, Michael Andretti. We even had Mario Andretti, uh, you know, Ross Brown, uh, Chip Ganassi, etc. Around the big names, we bring all the big series organizer like IMSA, IMCO, NASCO, NHRA. But we, we cover absolutely everything. Or, or grassroots, uh, short track. I mean, we bring pretty much everybody on. And then around these guys, we bring the tech webinars to talk about technology. And, and products and innovations, etc. So that's really uh, the, the best way to describe ePortrait. It's it's a community of business professionals that engage, as I said, through content. I'll tell you, Francis, you know, as a guy, I, my listeners know I was part of a company, Grails Garage, for 20 plus years, helped build that brand. And every year I would pack up my luggage and my passport and travel to Europe or Asia or wherever the shows would take us. And of course, there's the SEMA show and PRI uh, we go to looking for product to sell. And I'm sitting here going, man, if we'd had EPAR trade back when I was doing all that, the time I could have saved and the resources and the experience. Exposure. Now, of course, the technological side didn't exist. So you couldn't do that back then. It just didn't exist. But now, uh, yeah, you've revolutionized this entire thing so that people don't have to waste a lot of time. But more importantly, you're exposing the little guys, too, who can't afford to go buy booths in these shows. Uh, you know, I used to go to Auto Mechanica in Europe every year, and there was a big show in Cologne, a tool show. Mm-hmm. They would go to, and you know of all these, but they just ate up so much of your time. And again, for smaller companies, it was so expensive. So you you just opened up the world. It's it's fantastic. Well, thank you. I mean, we're not here to replace trade shows or in-person meetings, okay? This is not the point. But we're here to open new doors and new opportunities by making it easier and faster for the industry to stay connected. And what you just mentioned, uh, that's what I did for PRI. I traveled almost two, I think a little bit over two million miles. I was, if you ask me, I was traveling on a monthly basis and actually based out of LA was actually pretty good because in 12 hours I was in Europe, 12 hours Japan, 16 hours Australia, 12 hours, you know, Brazil, uh, South America. And I would go to all those places for PR. And, you know, in the the old days, I used to travel to the UK and organize John Kilroy build this beautiful PowerPoint presentation called the US market and the globalization of the industry. So I would rent a hotel room in the middle of England, fly to England, invite a hundred people, do a presentation 
representation of PRI, the globalization of the market, the U.S. racing market, etc., fly back home. Okay, now you can do that on Zoom in 30 minutes. I know. <laughs> you know? It's, yeah. so, so if we did not create this platform, someone else would have. And and uh, and so there will still be shows. There will still be people meeting and connecting because we are human and we like to make friendship and we like to interact and all this. But we're just, you know, making the world smaller. And and it's true that in today's world, the iskis of the world or the concams of the world or the Willwood or Brembo's, they don't wait anymore until the end of the year to introduce new products to the market. They just, there's new product coming out all the time. And that's really, the platform has become a destination for new stuff. And that's something we're very proud of. Well, this is also cool. I, again, I just wish uh, I should have been born 20 years later. I could have exposed and been a part of all this. But of course, PRI, performance racing industry, uh, and what that show did i mean do you ever sit and think sometimes about where would my life be if i had not been so persistent with steve well um it, it's you know Maybe i'd be racing a formula one car my friend <laughs> come on <laughs> no unfortunately no i was not good enough it's hard to admit but i, I had to be honest here and and steve it, it was the right you know i was in my 20s uh i i you know sometimes you don't realize how lucky you are when you're young and you don't have mortgage you don't have kids you don't have you know things to take care. so i was very free i quit my job i packed my suitcase i came here and i thought you know what with a, a tourist visa Visa, you can be here for about three months, you just, you know, and you just, you can't stay over. Otherwise you, you get in trouble. But mm -hmm. I know I flew in and out one or twice and just not to be in trouble or anything like that. And, and, uh, and also, uh, it, I thought pure worst case, I'll go back to Europe and my English will be better. <laughs> and so, so I was really on a mission to convince him and it was the right time. And, and PRI was basically at a milestone where they were very, very strong domestically, but they, there were some people actually within the show and, you know, unfortunately, Derek Dong is 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 passed to. Mm -hmm. He was, very, you know, from PFC and Wilfried Ibach from Ibach, and there's some people that were really pushing Steve to open his eyes to the international market, and they were very supportive of me. Um, and so that really helped. Um, and so I think, uh, yes, yeah, Steve, uh, uh, you know, thought, well, let's give him a try, and we'll see what happened. And I was fortunate enough that immediately I was able to bring new exhibitors, new buyers. And the thing is, when I was bringing those buyers, when you fly out of Sweden or Australia or Japan or South America to come to a show like PRI, you're a serious buyer. You're not going to fly there to walk around and, and go home. So we brought some, some pretty uh, heavy buyers, and that played a big part for the show and Middle East as well. And, you know, but I was fortunate because I traveled to all these places. And the thing is, when I was flying to Buenos Aires or England or Germany or whatever, and they would see a guy coming from this big PRI show, visiting their business, they were like, oh my God, wow. They were, they were so welcoming. They were so touched. And I, I traveled, you know, quite a few times with John Kilroy, the editor of the magazine. And John used to love, he said, I love in Europe, they treat editors like royalties. I mean, it's, I have a red carpet here in America. Nobody <laughs> cares about me. But when I go in Europe, they think I'm like God. And I said, John, you are, <laughs> you really are. <laughs> and uh, so it, it was, it was, uh, it was really a great, uh, 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 you know, we had a great time together. And of of course, Judy and, and all, all the, the, the good people uh, are from there. There's a few left there. And I had a good time with Sima as well. When Sima purchased PRI, you know, it was, it was a good, uh, good, good ride for me. But I knew the world was changing and Sima had other priorities. So they were not too much interested in, in going digital. And so I just, you know, decided to do it. And that was it. Good for you. This is awesome. We're going to take a short break, a little pit stop here, since you come from the world of racing. And we'll be right back. Thank you. Auto Geek's Blackfire SiO2 Spray Sealant. It's a spray-on, wipe-off sealant that's quick, safe, and easy to clean and protect your vehicles. I love using it on all my cars. Auto Geek's Blackfire SiO2 Spray Sealant is a spray-on, wipe-away sealant that uses SiO2 ingredients to provide a slick, brilliant, and long-lasting shine. Silicon dioxide is known to be one of the most effective ingredients in car care products. And Blackfire Spray Sealant takes advantage 
of every stunning feature it has to offer. This sealant will protect your paint from road film, dirt, and other common contaminants while providing an impeccable, long-lasting, hydrophobic surface that forces water to sheet and bead on your paint for months. Go to autogeek.net to get yours and for the best product selections on the internet today, along with their skilled technical support. Autogeek.net is where I go for all my detailing needs. That's autogeek.net. Check them out today. I've discovered Linkage. It's a new quarterly publication and website that covers the automotive market, driving, restoring, collecting, and discovering your passion for motor vehicles. Linkage is about experiences, opinions, and values. Linkage is an actual, informed, reasoned opinion based on firsthand experiences. A talented Linkage team covers the automotive world, the people who share your passion and mine, smart, considered, rational, and experienced opinions, ones you can learn from and grow. That includes our passion that drives auctions and the collector car market. So come with me and join us on this journey. And be sure to use the code CARS YEAH when you subscribe, and they'll give you $10 off. Boom! Linkage, geared for the automotive life. Subscribe today at LinkageMag.com. So we're back. So I, want, I always like to ask my guests about a big challenge, obstacle failure, something you came up against that was uh, unstoppable, if you will, but it taught you a very valuable lesson that you could take forward in a really positive way. So uh, take us on maybe a rough ride around the track and maybe a, a couple, of, uh, we won't say jersey barriers, but some tire barriers you might have run into. Oh, but obviously, e trade is the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, you know. Uh, first, leaving PRI and SEMA after 18 years was the hardest decision because we had it very comfortable and I could have, you know, ride it for a few more years and, you know, have it easy. So launching e trade, I probably underestimated that we were at basically pioneer. And I'm, I'm not saying, please don't think I have a big ego. I, I, I'm not trying to say I'm a pioneer, but I wanted to be an entrepreneur. And so I just, uh, uh, you know, launched the company and thought, you know, in one year we take the whole market by, you know, just everybody would be on. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I did not realize is how long it takes for yes. people to change their habits. Oh, and if gosh. you look at our industry, there are some companies that have exhibited in shows in the same booth with the same booth design or have run the same print ad in the same publication for 30 years. They I never know. change one thing. Yeah. And those people, when you change the habit, it takes forever. So it took a lot longer than I anticipated. And, uh, and, uh, and I would say... You know, people think we started a pandemic <laughs> because yeah. we really benefited from yeah. it. So yeah. no, we did not have anything to do with the pandemic. And I, I feel horrible for what happened to a lot of people. But it did really help us because when everything stopped, the eyes of the industry turned into us think, oh, my God, those guys – have everything figured yeah. out. That makes yeah. a lot of sense. Nice. So that's really when the activities on the platform started to skyrocket. And then that's when we thought, let's do a webinar series and race industry week and all these things. And that's really, that's when we started to, to really build momentum. But, but prior to that, it, it was uh, really fighting one company at a time convincing them, explaining, showing, et cetera, et cetera. And there are some people that just in one second, they just get it immediately and they jump on it. And others have always something going on. Oh, I don't have time. Oh, I have something and all that. And, you know, and Judy and I have built an incredible network of, of uh, friends in the industry. But even some of our good friends took forever. Change is very hard for people. Uh, not everybody, but, you know, I remember back uh, working and trying to convince people we should have email. <laughs> and, and they were like, why would we do that? People would just be talking to their friends all day. Okay, more. And then, yeah, then you got through that obstacle and then you go, okay, now we can go online. Everyone can have a computer and work online. Oh, no, you don't want them to do that. They're going to be looking at the wrong stuff. They're not going to be, you know, it's a hard thing for people to grasp, isn't it? When I met Steve Lewis, he had a typewriter 
Okay. <laughs> Typewriter. Okay? Yeah. But, but Steve is super, is like one of the smartest men in in the industry and, and I've ever met. But and and now he's Zoom. Okay. So and so he basically you know changed, but he had his typewriters. He has been very successful with his typewriters for, yeah. for decades. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's true. It's the change changing people's habit is probably uh, yeah the biggest challenge I had to uh, uh, to deal with. And uh, but it's you know nothing comes for free. You know and uh, and so we uh, we're in a strong position today because we fought really hard and we also came up with great ideas and great products and great solutions and and now people you know really understand what we do and that's very rewarding well you know what they say about those pioneers are the first ones to get the slings and arrows <laughs> as they come over the hill but uh if they survive that they usually do okay that's very cool now i know you're a car guy you used to race cars which is cool i'd like to hear about a special vehicle story a vehicle that really stands out for you and in the case of racing if it was a race car, that's cool. Maybe the first time you got into what a real proper race car might be. But is there a special vehicle story in your life? Yes, yes. Okay. So my dad uh, was a Peugeot guy. Peugeot is like a big brand in France. And the, in the 80s, they were a car that changed Peugeot. It was the 205 GTI. And if you remember the Golf GTI, uh, Peugeot came and basically designed and built the the 205 uh, uh, GTI, and that car was magic. It was basically a go-kart. And my my dad loved cars, uh, no, no interest in racing, but, you know, and had that GTI. And so I was a teenager, and I would steal that car at night uh, when everybody was <laughs> sleeping, and I would go ready racing the little roads in France. I'm a big fan of ready racing, and it's a miracle, and I never killed anyone, never killed my friends either. Uh, so I drove that car i mean that was really how i started to train you know and uh mm -hmm. and then one day i just uh came home walking because i had uh, flipped the car oh <laughs> and, no but i was like you know 16 and uh and Ouch. so yeah well, well. Oh, but, so i have a love yeah. story with that with that car and uh, my, my dad was just happy that i didn't kill anyone and that's the only car accident i ever had in my life so uh, i think well, it was a good lesson but uh, yeah. so yeah, that I that car so. if if People in America don't know uh, how that car looks. You go on Google, you type 205 GTI. It was just like super light, powerful. It was just like a go-kart on the road. And uh, it was just magical. Well, that car, when you look at and they didn't import those over here. So people no. in the U.S. won't know what they look like. But they look very much like a Golf yeah, exactly. GTI. That was um, you know, of the very golf, much. Exactly. The back end's a little more squished, mm -hmm. if I recall. You know, but it, and it's a little taller. It kind of yep. has some bigger windows and things. But yeah, very much a little rally car. I mean, that's what it looks like. Is, <laughs> you know, just fun, fun, fun. So I had a, a 79 Scirocco was my first yes. my first new car, the first gen Scirocco that yep. Jario designed and it came uh -huh. out and kind of a lot of the same feel, the hatchback, uh, sporty and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to be your car psychologist today. I'm going to crawl into your skull a little bit. Interesting place to be. I have a feeling if you were manifest or reincarnated, pun intended, in a vehicle, this isn't what you want to be. This is how you perceive yourself. What would you be? But more importantly, why? Well, I... I always had and still have I had not one car. I have three cars uh -huh. that are magical to me. Um, the first one is the Ferrari F40, uh, uh -huh. the first, the first supercar. And again, comes, we always go back to our, you know, you know, youth. younger a youth, etc. And and that car, I I almost cried when I saw it. And when I hear that noise, it just like gives me chills. It, it's just like, I, you know, I, I, it's breathtaking. And so it's, it's the, uh, it, there's no electronic, it's a pure beast. So Raw, that's, yeah. that's, that's a car I, I dream of buying one day. The prime is, is keeping more and more. <laughs> it's like worth millions and millions. Wow. Well, so, you know, they yeah. sold, I think they sold one or two down during car week a few weeks ago yeah. when I was down there. And yeah, Over they, uh, it's uh, yeah, it's gotten a little <laughs> crazy. Yeah. They, they so, just keep getting further out of reach. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's my uh, favorite uh, super car road car. Mm -hmm. And the next two are race cars. And the first one is the McLaren MP44 that Ayrton Senna uh, drove in uh, 1988 uh, and won the world championship. Zach Brown uh, has it. Uh, and so that car is Formula One for me at 
its best. Again, no electronics, a pure beast, good looking car. It's just like fascinating and just a noise and, and just like an incredible car. And then the third one is a Peugeot and it's the Rally car, the Peugeot uh, 205 T16, which was what made, uh, uh, you know, all build basically Peugeot was a cool brand in, in the Rally world and they won the championship in, uh, in 85 and 86. And that car, uh, again, just an absolute beauty. And uh, so that Peugeot uh, uh, 205 Turbo 16 was like, oh, again, just, and if you watch some <laughs> old videos on YouTube, it was just unbelievable. Yeah. So, so you're a bit of a uh, Frankenstein mixing these three cars together into one car is uh, basically you. Right? <laughs> I would not mix them. They are too too uh, <laughs> too pure for me. They are, but they are just like you know the the track car, the rally car, and the road car. And I think you know with that you pretty much covered. But uh, I yeah, think but, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's a nice uh, corral you got going there in that garage of yours. Wow. Yeah. Very very cool. Thank you. So let's talk about a great book because I love to share books that people have learned from or just enjoyed. Is there a book you'd like to share? Well, I have, uh, my wife loves books and she keeps buying books, uh, uh, for me all the time. And sometimes I have time to read it and sometimes I don't, uh, I'm actually, so this summer to go back to Yves Morisot, I saw my good friend Yves and you wrote a book, uh, of the 50 years anniversary of Stan 21. And it's, a, it's a book about his life and about Stan 21, but it's also about racing and and him and Simpson. I mean, they, they, they basically created safety, okay? Yes. Uh, so it's a, it's a beautiful – I don't know if you can buy the book. Uh, you know, Eve was – you know, uh, uh, generous enough to give me one and sign it. And, uh, and I know they have, I think they, are, uh, Stan 21 might, you know, reproduce a few of them, but they, it's a great book because there's so many good pictures. There was a preface from Alain Prost and all the great racers he had made in his life and all the cool yeah. pictures. And, and it, it's basically a history a little bit of our industry. And, and those guys were pioneer, you know, oh, yeah. uh, the Eve, the, I was talking about Wilfried Ibach, the Vic Edelbrock, the Eddie Ski. I mean, th those guys created the industry we're in, you know. And so uh, I, I love that. I love the I love these people that are still. And we 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 Judy and I were at an event and we saw Ed Itsky, uh at the Sima Gala back in in July, and he's 101. <laughs> and he's mm. still there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. Uh, I love that. I'm, uh, you know. Well, I'm going to have to reach out to Eve and see if he's got any of those available. Uh, that's yeah. pretty darn cool. What a legacy. And for you listeners that missed my my talk with Eve, you can go back and find his show on the Cars Yeah website, along with all the other 2,158 guests now. There's a lot of people <laughs> there. So I'm going to enable you to go on the ultimate drive. This is kind of a fun idea. I'm going to buy you any car in the world. You can take it anywhere in the world, and you can take anybody with you, even somebody from the past who's no longer with us. So I guess the question for you would be, is this going to be a street car or is this going to be a race car you're going to take on the track? You know, it's a tough one. There's so many people, but I'm a racer before anything else. Mm. So it has to be a race car. Okay. And, uh, and as much as I'd love to go with, you know, I, I heard Judy talking about, you know, uh, uh, American president and the history. And, oh, and yeah. yeah, I'd yeah. love to go with <laughs> Roosevelt, you know, and, and hear him, you know. And to, but uh, So if I'm going racing, uh, one of my idol when I was a, a, a kid, uh, a rally driver, Ari Vatanen, and I had the opportunity to meet with him several times during my career. I uh, attended some of the FIA sports conference, and, and Vatanen is just an incredible person, a charisma that's as big as, as, as his career, just a, an incredible guy. And so I'd love to go on a ride with him in the Pikes Peak car that he drove in the 88 or 89. Uh, it's, it was again a Peugeot, the 405 T16, a beast, an absolute beast. And they made a wonderful uh, video called Dance with Clouds. If you, uh, mm, yes. if you have, yeah. So it was, uh, so it has to be on dirt. So it would have to be on the dirt road in the old days of Pikes Peaks because now it's paved. And if you watch that uh, short movie, it's five or six minutes. It's race. It's pure driving. It's absolutely insane. And uh, <laughs> and so I'd love to to go in that car with with Vatanen. And uh, I might you know 
have a heart attack, but uh, yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. But I'd love that because I was is, is a pure talent and uh, uh, just like a beast, and uh, it would be an experience of a lifetime for sure. That's you for know, sure. I did, I watch those rally guys, and they have in car cameras, or they have people videotaping them going by in the air, and I just it's it's almost hard to watch because it's just unbelievable. It's like watching the guys on bikes at Isle of Man, mm-hmm. and you just how can they do what they're doing? The, you know how can they have the reaction times they're having? I mean, it's obviously seat time and it's talent and all those kind of things, but it's happening so fast. And when you add the elements of going through a forest or up Pike's Peak, where you make a mistake on some of those turns and you're gone, uh, you're off into space. Uh, that would be insane. I don't know if I could sit in a seat with somebody <laughs> doing that. I know. Uh, I love man. I would not. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a whole nother league of cojones uh, and craziness. But uh, talent. Talent on loan from God, as they say. So just amazing. Well, you've taken us on a wonderful trip today. And I'm really, really excited for not only what you've done, but just how you've revolutionized and changed the industry. And and more importantly, made it possible for more people to connect, because that's really what the car industry is all about, is connections, uh, people to promote what they're doing and get involved with people who can find a way to create a business around it and sell it. So my hat's off to you and Judy and the team you have there. Uh, it's absolutely spectacular. Before I let you go, though, could you share maybe some words of inspiration, a mantra, or a success quote with us? Well, thank you so much for having me, Mark. And, You're welcome. And, and, and thank you so much for your wonderful world uh, words. Uh, I mean, I'm a racer before anything else, okay? I love this industry. Uh, this is this industry, I've given a lot to it, but as the industry has given me back a lot too, and and I'm I'm so grateful of the support and the endorsement we we have been receiving for for the industry mm. as a whole. Well and, and 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 also, uh, you know, being a foreigner coming to this country, uh, I, I I tell my son very often. I says, Javier, don't listen to what people say. The American dream is real. Yes. I am the perfect example of it. I came here with a suitcase, and and I made it happen for myself. So. You can do that. And I think that's magical. And when I launched the portrait, same thing. It's, yeah, there is things in America that are great and things that are less, but but you have this entrepreneurial uh, philosophy, this entrepreneurial spirit in America that makes everything possible. And all yeah. you have to do is work your tail off. Mm-hmm. But if you really do, you have a chance to succeed. And so I am very grateful that, you know, I had the opportunity to come here and had a wonderful career. And I hope, you know, with a lot more years to to to, to go. And, and I would also say that, you know, the world is becoming smaller and smaller. And it, I hope our platform helps, you know, you know, all these people from around the world to connect to. And I would say, you know, take advantage of it. You know, it's, uh, you know, today, if you're a supplier or a buyer, I mean, it's, there is no more borders. I mean, you can travel the world so easily. Uh, you can have access to, you know, things that, were not possible years and years ago. So I think it's we're in a very, very exciting time. And and I'm I'm, you know, absolutely ex- very excited, you know, in, in, in a sense that, you know, what's ahead of us and uh, yeah, there will be challenges, but racers figure it out. They will do whatever it takes to to survive and to succeed. And so uh, you know uh, there is a uh, I remember we had Chip Ganassi on one of our webinar series and it says, you know, in the pandemic I'd rather be with a group of racers than anybody else because <laughs> they will make it happen. They will yeah. they will figure it out. They'll and figure I it think out. it's absolutely right. <laughs> and so I'm very happy to be in this industry and I'm very thankful for it. And uh, and I think we have a you know beginning of a new journey. It's gonna be very exciting in the years to come. It's absolutely incredible, and I appreciate what you said. The American dream is real, and I'm so happy when people like you come to this country and create spectacular things. That's what this whole country was built on, people coming here and building things and creating things and providing opportunities. And uh, most definitely, we have many things that we need to improve upon, but you know what? It's people like you that have come here and worked your tails off and done what you've done. So, Francis, thank you for Good. being here. Thank you for what you've built. And EPAR Trade, E P A R T R A D E, EPARTrade.com. Listeners, check it out. If you work in the industry, even if you don't, go check this out because. This site will inspire you. You can sign up to receive their emails. Keep in touch. You'll see some very cool things that are created. Uh, absolutely. Is there another way also, in addition to the website, that people can learn more about EPAR Trade? 
Oh, it's, everything is on the site. So, okay. you know, ePortrait.com, just the base of everything. And then, uh, yeah, they'll see everything there. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Francis, thank you for being so generous today with your time and your expertise. Thank you for what you've done for the industry. Uh, absolutely spectacular. Until you and I talk again, my friend, I'll see you down the road. Thank you, Mark. Thank you very, very much. You're welcome. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah.